Edward J. Emerson, what happened to Bugatti? So we have a series of events that are going on. I want to take a look at the companies that are operating in the automobile industry. One of our other reports stated that Bugatti had just came onto the scene, but for some reason we were never notified of a company buyout. And I'm looking at the company directory. I don't see Bugatti anywhere. Now, as far as our pension, our monthly pension payout is $4,132,704 per month. Our total liability is $800,425,196. Our pension fund is $3,154,214,000. Our on the 1915 employees that are going to retire, that's going to end out in 1940, which is not too far off. If you look as time goes on, the monthly payout dramatically starts increasing. For 1939, we have really surpassed our most expensive year to date, which was 1937. So when we take a look at our banking, we still have that 1940 2.5 million, which is going to hit our account. And we're at 14.7%. Local Mobile Company Americanas at 7.6%. Studebaker is at 6.4, which rounds out the three. And then there's Opal at 6.2% at number four. So, but they're still a lot further ahead than they were before. When we look at the revenue for Eclipse Micro, we see that they are making $20,486,667 and Opal is making $28,389,142. So now we're going to take a look at something that we haven't taken a look at for a little while, which is our racing reports for May of 1939. And as you can see, we are not necessarily making a lot of profits, except for the World Grand Prix, we're making profits. So when we look at Dove Industries, they have pretty much taken the spot of the Lark Cabriolet, which has been discontinued for the 1939 model year and replaced up from a compact Cabriolet to a full-size Cabriolet Coupe underneath the Jewel line. So the Dove Industries, we just released a ultra premium, the Q6S W12, which gives Dove Industry exclusivity towards a premium vehicle, which they hadn't had before, dedicated factories just for their vehicle. EE Sport is going to be categorized as something similar to e-performance. Emerson Allure is at 28,494,337. Emerson Electric, even though there is still some revenue coming in, we still had one vehicle that was still branded Emerson Electric, and that was the Solar. But Emerson Electric is still going to maintain the factories. Emerson Glande is at 5.9 million per month. Emerson Motors, we're up to about 72.5 million in revenues. Emerson Truck, 7.8 million. And they're just doing a fantastic job. Granville has six million in revenue, and they this is the first year for the introduction of Granville. Titan Truck is doing rather well with the introduction of the new Dallas facility, and then we have a new Houston, Texas facility. Now, as far as our stock holdings, we have a total gain of 834 
million. And as far as May of 1939, we sold 12 vehicles in Africa. We sold 2,598 vehicles in Australia, 7,589 in Europe, and 71 1,857 in North America, grand total of 82,056 vehicles. Since it is May of 1939, we're going to take a look at the Granville electric vehicle lineup. We're going to take a look at the 1941 models. We have already set forth for the 1942 models. And as you can see, the quality has increased on the solar at about 1%. We're 1% lower as far as quality for the Cyrus, we're 1% higher for quality for the Chiron. Elio were 1% higher. Samson, we lost 2% in quality. Ravi, we haven't lost any percentage. And then for the Solaris, quality is the same. Our manufacturing standard is being followed through to make sure that we're providing a high quality vehicle to our customers and just the standardization across the board. So next month is going to be the EE Sport trim line. 